hello. We've already reviewed four top things that you can do to cut your risk of dementia. And now we're gonna cover another eight. In all, these risk factors account for a whopping 40% of dementia cases, almost cutting your risk in half. Incredible. So let's jump right into what you can do to almost cut your risk of dementia in half by up to 40%. So starting, what can you do early in life? If you're a kid or you're a teenager and you're watching this, or you know somebody or love somebody who's in that stage of life, please help them be excited about school. If they aren't excited or just can't get there to be thrilled about going to school, help them find ways to go and engage and do the best they can. Helping kids finish high school is crucial. And if they can be inspired to go on to any kind of education after high school, let's encourage that as well. Higher education reduces dementia risk with a special emphasis up into the age of 20, where your brain reaches its maximal plasticity or ability to be modified. 7% of dementia is attributed to whether or not people finish high school. However, we know that neuroplasticity doesn't stop when you're a kid, it continues. Lifelong learning and experiences contribute to this idea of cognitive reserve. And that's a concept that talks about how efficient your brain is when it's doing something. That means that even if you have pathological changes in your brain over time, like plaques and tangles that are attributed to Alzheimer's disease, vascular problems or other issues, even if you have that damage in your brain, if you stay active, if you're curious, if you continue to learn over your lifespan, you have a better chance of not experiencing dementia while you're alive. I have a whole video on this and a link is above me and I'll put it in the description below. In midlife, there are several things that you can do to reduce your risk of dementia. Here are five. Protect your ears or treat hearing loss. A stunning 8% of dementia is attributed to this issue, having problems with hearing. I have an entire couple of videos on how to think about hearing loss, what to do about it, and how it relates to brain health. Secondly, protect your head. Traumatic brain injury accounts for 3% of cases of dementia. Sure, if you're an athlete, like a football player, a boxer, a horseback rider, you know what you're doing and you know what to do. Wear helmets and take other safety precautions. Do the best that you can. But for the rest of us, let's be thoughtful about our heads. One great tip for most people, especially as we age, give away your ladders. The saddest days in my clinic are when people come to see me for testing and they never come back because they get up on a ladder and fall. I have a specific case of a lovely woman came in for testing and over the week or so I was preparing her report, she's climbing on a ladder, going to the attic to get her Christmas decoration, falls off and never comes back to see me again. We can even focus on falls in general because so many of them result in broken bones or head injuries. I have an entire video coming out that talks specifically about fall prevention and the exact things that you can do to reduce your risk of falling. Issue number three, treat high blood pressure. Hypertension accounts for another 3% of dementia cases. Go to your doctor and make a plan. Changes might include things like medications, exercise, changing how you eat, or other lifestyle things like doing yoga or meditating. Check out my video on how heart health relates to brain health for specific ideas on this. Step number four, watch your alcohol. Yes, there's mixed evidence on whether drinking a little might be good for your brain and body or bad for your brain and body, but the main message here is just don't overdo it. They note that a good benchmark is keeping it under 23 beverages a week. So keeping it under three drinks a day. Drinking more than that is estimated to account for another 1% of dementia cases. And number five, watch your weight. Obesity by itself 
without linking it to all the other usually related complications like high blood pressure and diabetes and so on, is linked to another 1% of dementia cases. For people who struggle with obesity, there isn't an easy answer like, oh, eat less. Please work with your doctor to find a holistic plan that actually works for you. As we continue to move through life, there are other things that we can do to address our risk for dementia. The researchers categorize these as later life intervention, but there's no understandable reason why we can't be working on these issues our whole lives. Here are the six factors. Number one, quit smoking or help someone else quit. A huge 5% of dementia cases is linked to smoking. Smoking is a crazy habit that really traps people so they need resources and community to help them make the change. So many good resources exist for that path, and I link them below for your use. Number two, acknowledge and treat depression. Can you believe that 4% of dementia cases are linked to people being depressed? It's not a normal part of aging. It's a terrible way for people to slog through life, and there are treatments available. I have an entire video on how to get a counselor or therapist when everybody good seems full. I have another video on different types of professionals that can work with you in different ways, whether it's through medication or counseling or other lifestyle interventions that can really help people to treat depression. Please watch those videos or comment on any of my videos if I can help you find a resource that might work for you. Number three, in a very related vein, connect with people. Social isolation is linked to causing another 4% of cases of dementia. We live in a society that is drowning in loneliness and disconnection. It's one of the main reasons I made this channel. I want to feel connected to you, and I'm hoping that all of you can also feel connected to each other. We aren't alone and we don't have to be. I have an entire video on how to connect with people and how it impacts your brain. Even small things like making eye contact and chatting with people at the grocery store can make a huge difference in terms of how you feel connected and your mood. I'll link my playlist on videos about connection in the description below. Number four, let's be active. Physical inactivity is linked to another 2% of cases of dementia. You don't have to go run marathons, but do anything that you enjoy. Even small things like dancing in the kitchen or playing with your grandkids, it all adds up. And you don't have to do, oh, I have to go for a walk for 20 or 30 minutes. I have to go to the gym. It's not required. Every minute adds up. So anything that you do throughout your day, if you're taking the stairs or walking farther away because you didn't park right next to the store, it all can help you be more physically active. I'll also link my videos and the whole series on exercise and the science of brain health below. Number five, let's work together to combat air pollution. Air pollution by itself is linked to another 2% of dementia cases. So for people who live in cities and polluted cities in particular, let's work together to help their air be cleaner and have cleaner air for all of us. I have a cousin, Matt Johnson, who's a professor at the University of Copenhagen. He does research and teaching on the environment, the atmosphere, air quality, and what we can do to make the air and environment better for everyone. Go Matt! <laughs> he says things like even small steps, like walking or riding your bike, even once a month can make a change in the bigger picture. And number six, prevent or treat type two diabetes. Another 1% of dementia cases is linked to this illness alone. We can do so many things to address this issue. And I have one video in particular that talks about kind of an unexpected way we can decrease our blood A1C levels, which is directly linked to the problem. The risk of dementia increases with the length and severity of your diabetes. So every little thing that you do can make a real difference. So all of these factors, when looked at holistically, are estimated to add up to impact 40% of risk for dementia. It's almost half of your risk. Incredible. And yes, I do get a little excited about this stuff, but it's cool. <laughs> so look at the list. Start anywhere. Maybe pick the things that have the biggest percentage impact. Maybe pick anything. But everyone has something that they can do to lower their risk for dementia. 
I would love it if you would comment below and say which ones you do or which things are your biggest challenge. We're in this together and the support that we give each other goes a long way. So thank you for coming and for getting inspired with me. And I can't wait to see you in the next video.